Hello everybody, welcome to 2020. It is of course the Chris Pritchard Cycling News Show. And our first transition of 2020 goes to this one. As you might have noticed there, you might have noticed it on the Cycling Hub Facebook page or over on the Cycling Hub Instagram page. You notice that? Yeah? Do you like it? Leave your comments down below and let us know what you think. Um, listen, Cycling Hub has, has taken a step forward in 2020. We're changing things up just a little bit and we kind of wanted to leave the old Cycling Hub in the past. It's time to move on. It's time to move forward. So as you probably already know, me and Tim are running the show now here at Cycling Hub. So we thought it was it was a perfect opportunity just to, to rebrand ourselves, bring something new, bring something fresh and, and try and get away from the old the old cycling hub uh, because we're moving forward in 2020 and we've got some amazing things planned. So without further ado, let's get on with some of that stuff that we've got planned by telling you this exclusive bit of information. The podcast coming back. What? That's right, the Gruppetto 2.0. We might change the name, we've not decided yet, but the Gruppetto 2.0 is coming back and it is coming back imminently. We just invested in some brand new production kit which is arriving literally in the next five minutes. So hopefully we're gonna be bringing you that podcast very soon. So leave your comments down below. Who would you like to hear or see on the podcast this year? We've got me, we've got Cameron Jeffers, but we're also gonna get involved some guests as well. So if you could have any guests on the Gruppetto 2.0 podcast, who would it be and what would you like to know? Talking of Cameron Jeffers, he's just launched a brand new channel over on YouTube where he's gonna be daily vlogging. Doubt it's going to be daily vlogging, but, but, but vlogging much more consistently because obviously, as you've seen, probably since he took a break from YouTube, that he's been coming back with videos which are of higher production quality and, you know, the, these big, epic challenges, adventures, uh, and he's going to be doing more and more of that on his, on his main channel, but he's also wanting to, um, to feed the need that people desire from him when it comes to daily vlogging. So you're going to be able to catch him on his brand new channel, Daily Vlogging, daily who knows but hopefully as much as possible so make sure you go and check that out and also go and check out his brand new video as he goes coast to coast without a map well, i know that sounds like a bit of a weird question but uh do you know which way is newcastle mate anything no all right cool 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 if you want to go and check out that video link is down in the description now bear with me because this this new show is going to be so all over the place because there's something else I forgot to talk about prior to Christmas I think it was the 23rd of December I went on the pod crash podcast you can go and listen to that it's the podcast with Philip Hines MBE Callum Skinner like 78 gold medals between them at the Olympics they invited I say they invited me on I pestered them till they let me on I mean they've had guests like Chris Hoy Ed Clancy Joe Rousel and I thought, well, come on, it's only a matter of time before they ask me, so I may as well pester and get on. I, I, nah, truthfully, I love Callum, I love their podcast, and I just want to be part of it. Um, so yeah, they had a free guest spot and Pritch filled it, so if you want to go and check it out, link is down in the description. Right, I think that's all the housekeeping done. Let's get on with some racing news. Brand new transition. <sighs> now, the, probably the biggest news today is the news coming out that the Milan San Remo in 2020 might be cancelled. Over on cyclist.co.uk, the Milan San Remo could be cancelled due to Poggio landslides, reports are suggesting. According to Ansa Liguria, I think that's how you pronounce it, I don't know. This year's Milan San Remo could supposedly be cancelled due to the Poggio being unrideable. An Italian news service have stated that due to the landslides on the climb of the Poggio, it is in too bad a condition to be raced upon and could lead to the race being cancelled. Back in early December, heavy rain on the Ligurian coast saw multiple landslides on the Poggio climb that forced local authorities to close the road. It was then suggested that after an investigation, there would need to be 10 million euros worth of repairs in order to reopen the road fully and guarantee its use in the Milan San Remo in March. Could you imagine a cycling season early March without a Milan San Remo to look forward to? Like, the Poggio is the Milan San Remo, right? It's one of the most iconic, not climbs, but hills in cycling period. But can they not just ride round it? Can they not do something else to, to make sure it goes on? Do they need the Poggio? 
Can they not get around it somehow? Would you like to see a Milan San Remo with a different route that doesn't take in the Poggio? I don't know. I mean, there's still time. There's still potential that it could go ahead. They, they, they could have to reroute it. I don't know what, exactly what's going to happen. But, but I mean, it's not a good start to the year, is it? Next up, and a story we spoke about towards the end of last year, and that's Sophie Diverse and her returning a positive test for exogenous anabolic steroids following an out-of-competition control on the 18th of September, the week prior to the World Championships. Now, the last we spoke about this, and she obviously denied any knowledge of any substances being in her system that shouldn't be in there. She's requested her B sample to be tested, and while we're waiting for that, Mitchelton Scott, her new team, have actually put her contract on suspension. They said, due to an alleged infringement to the anti-doping policy and code of conduct of the team and pending results from an ongoing investigation, Sophie Diverse's contract has been suspended and her name removed from the UCI registration. She ain't gonna be riding for them in 2020. So a brand new spot at Mitchelton Scott has just opened up for someone. So who knows who's gonna get that seat. But has, has this ever happened? It must have happened at some point. But you let me know because I can't bother to go and research this. But has there ever been an A sample that's been tested and we've found out that there was an illegal substance in it? Then a B sample was tested and actually, oh, no, we got it wrong. Some Something must have been contaminated here when we tested it. Or is the B sample like a get out of jail card? I don't know. If you pay enough money, we can make sure that this sample actually doesn't have anything in it. I don't know. It, it must. I don't know. Does it happen like that? It does, doesn't it? Let me know in the comments below. And sticking with the women's pro peloton, the first week in January over in Australia is obviously the Bay Crits, and it's the first time we really get to see some some big names racing prior to the Tour Down Under. What's going to happen with the Tour Down Under with everything that's going on in Australia at the minute? I mean, who knows? Hopefully, it's going to be going ahead. But the Bay Crits got underway today. And Amanda Spratt took the victory in the first of the women's. Spratt riding for Lexus of Blackburn took first place. Ruby Rosman Gannon from Absolec, maybe, was in second position. And Spratt's teammate, Chloe Hoskins, rounded out the podium. Now, over in the men's, favourite going into it, Brenton Jones, who was riding for Novo Tell Mitchelton, could only finish in third position. Cameron Ivory took second place for GPM Stultz. And again, Lexus of Blackburn taking the victory with Sam Wellsford. Bay Crits, they're actually um, live on Facebook as well. Um, I'll find the link, I'll leave it down in the description so you can go and catch up with today's event of the men's race and obviously you'll be able to find out the next couple of events from the Bay Crits and be able to watch them live on Facebook. And then finishing off with the racing news, you might have seen it, it's been all over the old Tinter's web. But one of the last teams to actually announce what they were doing and what was happening was Corindon Circus. Now, they just signed a couple of very talented British riders in. The talented 18-year-old Ben Tullett, the legendary Yorkshireman Scott Thwaites, and also Lincoln GP winner Alex Richardson. The team has now changed names, changed sponsors, and is now going to be called Alpacin Phoenix. Now, we spoke way back when um, the Alpacin and Canyon were parting ways from Katusha, they were going to potentially lose their World Tour license. And we spoke about how uh, Alpacin and Canyon wanted to align themselves with Matthew van der Poel. And it seems that they've done that in this brand new team. This team looks like it's likely to be stepping up without, uh, I mean, come on, you can't have one of the best riders in the world and not be a World Tour team. So watch this space for Alpacin Phoenix as they step up and take it to the big boys. But it's going to be interesting to see what the likes of uh, Thwaisi can do. Ben Tullett is an amazing up-and-coming rider who, who's coached by Dean Downing, and he's doing some amazing things on the cyclocross scene. And, you know, you couldn't be in a better team when it comes to cyclocross. Then, obviously, you've got Alex Richardson, who just seems to be getting better and better as well. So it's going to be interesting to see what that team does. Obviously, there's a lot, there's a lot more interest in this team than there ever has been. I think now we've got some big sponsors on board there. You've got the likes of Matthew van der Poel in there. This team is just going to grow and grow. And I think for the, for the likes of Thwaitse, this could be his, his second win that he needs to, to step up. And come on, he's still a quality rider. He just doesn't add the look that he, he, I feel that he deserves. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we're going to see some big things from him as well as, you know, the likes of Matthew van der Poel just winning every single cyclocross race, probably dominating a few road races in 2020 as well. Now, talking of new teams, talking of new kits, 
Mark Cavendish posted his first picture of himself in his brand new Bahrain McLaren kit. And I can't help thinking that that, it just doesn't look right. Him not on a Cervelo or on a Specialized. What's he thinking in that picture? It's not about the sprint anymore, Cav. It's about the money. Just keep telling yourself that. And seeing that kit in the flesh, I think I did say that I quite liked it at the start, but with those blue socks, nah, that does not work at all. And that's your roundup of news on the 3rd of Jan... Hey, hang on a second. 2nd of January was my birthday, right? Send me some birthday wishes down below. I'm going to start a question of the day, I think. Yeah, I'm going to start a question of the day. Not today, but I'm going to start a question of the day at some point. Make sure, if you've not done already, you have subscribed to the channel. Make sure you've hit that notification bell so you know when we go live with our brand new live streams. CV Arcade World Cup is going to be starting soon and I'm going to be taking place in it. Taking place in it? Taking part in it? Not bad. I mean, I'm going to take a place in it by taking part in it. I don't know what the prize pot is, but hopefully it's going to be all right. Still going to be Zwift streaming. Don't worry about that. I know all you Zwift fans out there still want that. Um, once January's out of the way, we're going to try and start planning some rides again on Zwift. Um, January for, for the Zwift eventers sounds like it's absolutely bedlam. So I'm not going to bother them with trying to get my, my uh, events up there. There's obviously bigger fish to fry at the minute. So eventually we'll hopefully have a weekly or monthly, I don't know what it's going to be, but it'll be something. We'll sort something, don't worry. But yeah, CV Arcade stream is coming. If you want to get involved in that, if you want to be part of CV Arcade World Cup and then Benjamins, then um, make sure you go and download the beta and, and get involved in that. Other than that, all that's left to say is hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, follow those links down in the description. See you again soon for another video. That's it, bye.